What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. this is my second channel, and this is your home for my Twitch highlights and my podcast. So if you like this, and you wanna see more of that, and you wanna join the live streams, there's a link to that in the description of this video. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Bring Me The Horizon has a new single called Die For You, which apparently is directed by Ollie Sykes. Here's what Ollie says the song is about. Die For You is a song about toxic obsessions, vices, and things you can't kick. She has a little bit of experience with, you know, there's a few years ago, he was had a pretty serious ketamine habit. I want to say something that I never thought I'd actually talk about. Before we wrote Sun Paternal, I were a fucking drug addict. I was addicted to a drug called ketamine. I was on it for years, and I was fucked off my head. The song is a triumphant and emotional one for me because it was a time of realization to kick the things that were no good and to take the choice in bettering myself. It also connects to a deeper theme about us as a society. This song is about how we live in a society. <laughs> but anyway, let's listen to it and then I'll give you my thoughts. Intros must go. No intros to videos, no intros to song, just don't bore us, get to the chorus. Now, I already feel like I'm watching some like direct-to-DVD Blade knockoff movie from 2001. That's usually a bad thing. Although, Bring Me the Horizon is one of those bands, like maybe they can pull it off, we'll see. But I definitely feel like I'm watching a Blade knockoff right now. It's so long, do we really, do we need to see them walking down the hallway for three seconds? Do we need to? I don't think we do. <laughs> Which pill are you taking, red or blue? Another a mandate right now. I was just on the phone with Obama and we agreed in 2021 bands are now forbidden from using this like cyberpunk outline text kind of thing. He hasn't announced it publicly yet, but uh, on uh, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, he's going to come out and he's going to announce a ban on that. The other thing that Obama and I agreed to ban is the thing where it says the name of the song at the beginning, because Post Malone did that two years ago. And now every band has like a fake, you know, title sequence in their song. Then Spirit Box did it and then everybody did it because for whatever reason spirit box is one of those bands that everyone fucking copies so here it is a minute and 12 seconds into this video and the song still hasn't started yet here we go here's ollie looking as beautiful as ever bring me the horizon they're smart they know that they need to get the zoomers on board so ollie's got his tiktok earring smart move uh-oh i'm worried i see this frame and i thought oh shit are they gonna be genting in a colored room The last thing this world needs is more genting in a colored room, so please don't do me like this, Bring Me the Horizon. Oh. Okay, now this this is like Post Malone. I thought it was some dude with a V for Vendetta mask and a fedora, and I was like, uh-oh, he's gonna show up and vape and start trying to talk to everyone about Magic the Gathering and atheism and just totally kill the vibe, but fortunately I was wrong. Whew. Okay. No genting. Okay, I was wrong. This is not a Blade knockoff. This is a cutscene from Vampire the Masquerade. I think I follow her on TikTok. Oh boy, fake lava. How did you know? Vampire ass yeah, in a PC game. This. So, this is like MGK meets Post Malone meets Architects. I respect it. Inevitably, this is what happens. They come out, they do something new, and everyone's like, what the hell is this? They've gone too far. This is terrible. What were they thinking? And then a month or two later, we all warm up to it, and we're like, you know what? Actually, that song is pretty good. And then six months to a year later, every other fucking metalcore band on the planet starts to sound like that. So get ready for a wave of Post Malone core, because I guarantee you it's going to happen. This is MGK meets Architects, and I absolutely guarantee that you're going to see a lot more of this. Royalty-free EDM trap, but gent breakdowns. Yes, <laughs> exactly. It's like the royalty-free vlog music from some like travel thoughts vlog to Bali, but with with genty breakdowns. What I can't believe is that there hasn't been a Travis Barker feature yet. I mean, I'm kind of joking, but kind of not. I mean, if anybody should have a Travis Barker feature, it should be Bring Me the Horizon, right? How are they going to let all these other bands scoop them? You know what they could do that was even more elite tier? than that they could get a tom DeLong feature but i mean a video like this and a song like this how could you not have a travis barker feature i'm disappointed 
Very pop punk. Oblivion NPC, yes. And then we've got like this vampire here. I wasn't sure if the vampire was like voguing or having some sort of drug related seizure or maybe maybe both. I don't know. Chunk no Captain Ollie. Yeah, you know, I'm liking this so far. I, I almost feel like this is the closest thing to an easy core revival that, you know, we've gotten. Leave it to Bring Me the Horizon to just come out of left field with something that nobody ever thought would come back or be relevant or whatever. Leave it to them to do it. I mean, they have proven that they can do whatever the fuck they want, that they can play everything from pop to like ambient to deathcore to metalcore to whatever you want to call this. Leave it to them to prove that literally anything can be relevant if it's done right. I think the song's great. This song is about Ollie Sykes' tragic addiction to skooma. He, he mapped it to his mouse wheel and he drank 40,000 skooma in one second and jumped across the entire map. <laughs> Candy, candy, he makes so much. Uncle Sweet Share has a magic touch. Oh, no, no, no. They committed the criminal sin. Just when the song was getting good, they stopped with a goddamn interlude. Why would you do this? We're not here to watch your movie, Ollie. Sorry. Watch a goddamn cutscene? <sighs> Rookie move. This is a local band move. You guys are better than this. Now watch, every goddamn band is going to do this too. Every shitty gentcore band <laughs> is going to make a video with a, a fucking interlude, a cutscene three quarters of the way into it. Mark my fucking words because everything that Bring Me the Horizon does becomes shamelessly copied within 18 months. I don't understand what's happening. I just see a bunch of like edgy like cyber goth nerds in this club why why are you shoehorning this into a great song why <laughs> 200 to 1 aspect ratio my eyes aren't wide enough aren't, aren't wide enough to see this remember do you guys know who hype williams is he he was the guy who did all the uh 2000s rap videos like big pimpin and stuff and he kept getting his aspect ratios kept getting narrower and narrower and narrower and i was expecting hype williams videos to just get to the point where it's just a single row of pixels because <laughs> that's the most cinematic i feel like that's something bring me the horizon would do i feel like they would put out a video that's just a single row of pixels so cinematic this is a blood See, I'm uncomfortable with his outfit. This Ellen DeGeneres in 1992 outfit, it makes me uncomfortable. But you know what? Great art is supposed to make us uncomfortable. So maybe they're doing their job. Maybe maybe that's how I was supposed to feel. So See, I was expecting some like gent breakdown there and they didn't give it to us, which I like. This, this chorus is, is really good. I think this is awesome. This is one of the freshest things I've heard in quite a while. I mean, obviously, this sound has been around for a while in one form or another, so it's not necessarily like we've never heard anything like this before. It's not like first heard, I don't know, issues or whatever, and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> It's drawing from stuff that's familiar. Justin Bieber meets MGK, you know, meets Architects. But it sounds fresh to me. That's what Bring the Horizon does. They're constantly ahead of the curve. They're constantly evolving. They never rest. They never just settle for average. They never repeat themselves. It's this cycle. Every time this happens, they come out, people hate it, and then they warm up to it and they start to like it and then everyone copies it. This is what they do every fucking album, every sort of time that they reinvent themselves. At this point, they have no genre. Like, Bring Me the Horizon could literally do a country album <laughs> and it would work because that's just what they do. They're that fucking good. In the scene, in, in their genre, which I guess I'll call metalcore, although, you know, again, I would say they're kind of post-genre at this point. I've talked about this before. It's been so just down and dreary and angsty for so long and just like, Jesus Christ, another goddamn genty fucking song with some white dude fucking pissing and moaning about his feelings like god can we fucking have something else we already have that shit give us some new shit it's almost like bringing the horizon's job is to show the scene that they have permission to do something different like everyone's like okay we're still we're still doing the thing right and then bringing the horizon comes along and they're like 
you don't have to do the thing, guys. There's this other thing. You can do other stuff. And they, they do it, and everyone's like, okay, cool, time to move on. I hope that this song is the nail in the coffin of the gent core thing. Gent is a privilege, not a right. You've abused your gent privileges, and now they've been revoked. 